<laughs> hey, Paul. Hiya. The saucer's with cracked, so I brought a cup. That's no good. I need a saucer. Oh, it's bad manners to drink out of a saucer, and you get more in a cup. No, it's not to drink out of. It's for the show, and it's not that kind of saucer. It's a flying saucer. Well, this could be a flying cup. Ah, d -d -d be careful. That's a valuable piece of china. Is it? Yeah, it's from Doc the Croc. Doc the Croc? Hmm. Oh, you mean the miner with the china? That's him, yeah. Oh. See, today's show, we're going to find out if there's life on other planets. Oh. No, no. UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Oh. You won't be needing this, then? No. Well, we've a fascinating programme for you today, especially for those of you with a scientific bent. Scientific bent what? It's a figure of speech. Oh, sorry. Today we'll be investigating UFOs and asking, are they really flying saucers? No. Of course, flying saucers are always seen in the sky at night. And, uh, as you can see, it is very dark. And perfect viewing conditions. So let's have a look through the telescope. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I'm looking to see if there's any visitors from Mars. Oh, I had a visitor from Mars. Did you? Yeah, it was me grandad. He was staying with her for the weekend and he came round. Not that kind of Mars, the planet Mars. Oh, the planet Mars. Yeah. Now, did you get the saucer? Yes, it's over here. Oh, good. Look. Hey. There it is. Hey, it's a very nice saucer, isn't it? Yes, I made it myself. Did you? After two hubcaps, a toffee paper and a piece of sticky plaster. Well, where's the sticky plaster? On my thumb. I hit it with a hammer. Oh, sore. No, it was definitely a hammer. Look, I tell you what, you go and get the paint for the map. I'll get the paint for the map. Good lad. Now, this here is our visual aid. And this is my first aid. This is an exact replica of... Two hubcaps and a toffee paper. No, go and paint the map. I'll go and paint the map. Thank you. It's an exact replica of a flying saucer. Now, here today on Chucklevision, we're going to prove once and for all whether there are or are not flying saucers. And quite personally, I believe that I'm not. Now, many people believe that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Oh, I love them on toast. What are you talking about? Beans on toast. I love them. No, extraterrestrial beings from another planet. Or get mine from the supermarket. No, no, beings, beings. Oh, beings. Yeah, now, what's a being? A wasp on a trampoline. Being, being. An extraterrestrial being is something from another planet. Oh. Not of this world. A bit like you. Um, now what are you doing? Have you finished the chart yet? Yeah, now I'm having a snap. Oh, well, I'll go and have a look. All oh, right. Hey, it's a very nice chart, isn't it? Isn't it? What's this? That's a black hole. Black hole? Yeah. What's a black hole? I don't know, but it's very dense. That makes two of you. Thank well, let's put the planets up. The planets? You can pass them to me. OK, then. Now, in the solar system, this would be Mercury. Mm. <laughs> and this... this would be Venus. This... this would be the planet Earth. And uh, this... well, this, of course, would be the Sun. You know that? And this, well, this would be the moon. As you can see, it's a half moon. Now, hey, to put... Can I have a bite of your moon? Now, to give you some idea of how far an alien spacecraft would have to travel to get from the nearest planet to Earth, we have a little demonstration to put it all into perspective. Now, this melon would be the nearest planet. Mm. <laughs> and uh, this apple would be the planet Earth. Oh. Now, if you'd like to back off a little... Where to? Well, just keep going till I tell you and we'll get the distance, you see. Oh, right. Right, just back off. OK. Now, keep going. Keep going. Right. Keep going. Keep going. OK. 
Keep going then. Hey, Paul. What? I think I found evidence of a landing. Oh, well, don't bother, just keep going. Okay. I've got. Whoa! All right. Yeah, is this far enough? No, just keep going till I tell you to stop. Okay. Is this far enough? Well, keep going. Well, I think that's the last we'll be seeing of him for a little while. So, in the meantime, let us go outside and see if we can see any evidence of a landing. Paul? Paul? Where is he? Oh. Paul? Paul? Well, here we are, miles away from anywhere. An ideal landing spot for alien objects. And hush, I hear something now. My goodness, an unidentified flying melon. Hey, what are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. I thought I left you on the other side of the universe. Oh, never mind. Now you're here, make yourself useful. OK. Stand there, be quiet and say nothing. But, uh, No buts. But, but, now, when people say they have been visited by aliens, we call this a close encounter. Hey, my uncle was a close encounter. How ridiculous. Hey. People can't be close encounters. Well, he was. Hey. He was an adder up on a poultry farm. Adder up? Yeah, but he was very short sighted, so he had to get close too. He was a close hen counter. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, yeah, more than he could. Yeah. Hey, he was got into awful trouble. Did he? Yeah, well, he counted the chickens in with the roosters. Huh? Yeah, there was a right cockadoodle do about it. Yeah, but just a minute, just a minute, Barry. What? What's all this got to do with UFOs? Nothing. Oh, I see. Now, as I was saying, on a deserted spot like this, it's an ideal place for aliens to land. Ideal, so, ideal. Yes. Hey, just a minute. What? Barry. Hey. Just look at this grass. What's up with it? Well, look how flat and squashed it is. It's flat here, yes. And how long the grass is all round. It's long here. And it's yeah. short in the middle. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? What? We've only stumbled across a UFO landing spot. Have we? Yes. You see, the UFO comes in, it lands, squashes the grass, then takes off again and leaves a mark like this. Yeah. Well, I'm proud to present here on Chocolavision, we have conclusive evidence that UFOs have landed on Earth. Uh, over to Armchair Theatre. Well, you could have told me, couldn't you? Yeah. I might have looked a right idiot then. Well, you looked usual yourself to me. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. Oh. Here, let's have a look over this way. Okay. Captain Z Bonecrusher spoke over the spacecraft's intercom. Attention all crew, prepare to crash land. He took the joystick in both hands, when suddenly he heard an anguished shriek. Martin, you big divvy, put that down and get on with the washing up. Flying saucers and UFOs, that's all you ever think about. Martin's sister often went on like this. She was old, she'd left school, and she was on the... YTS. They don't exist, you know. Martin swished his hand in the greasy washing up water and slowly wiped an eggy saucepan with the dishcloth. What don't unidentified flying objects? Martin hated her when she used that sarcastic tone of voice. He felt like tipping a saucepan full of greasy washing up water right down her neck, but he knew his dad would go mad if he did. It's been proved. It's all rubbish. It's all in people's imaginations. Distortions caused by the light. You know, that sort of thing. They could exist. Oh, have you ever seen one? Well, no. But that's all part of the mystery. <laughs> Martin wanted to show his sister a thing or two about UFOs, but it wasn't until after school on Monday that he thought of a way of doing it. He went across the road to Dave the Mechanics. Dave was an apprentice at the local garage and he was mad on cars. He also flew model aircraft. Martin wouldn't usually have spoken to somebody of Dave's age, but Dave's what you'd call a friendly chap. Martin spotted him under a car. Hey, Dave, I've got this great idea. 
Fire away, Martin. By the time Martin had explained his idea, David emerged from under the car and he was laughing his head off. What do you reckon then, Dave? Will you do it? <laughs> I'll do it right enough. I mean, what's life without a bit of mystery? But you've got to do me a favour in return. Anything. OK, Martin. Let's go. They went in. Dave took down one of his remote control planes and Martin got some tin foil from his pocket. They set to work. And in no time, Dave's plane was looking suspiciously like a, well, like a flying saucer. Karen, look at that. Up there in the sky. Up in the sky was the flying saucer. It twisted and turned, shining eerily. It's weird. What do you reckon it is? I don't know. Well, it's some sort of object. And it's flying. And seeing as you don't know what it is, it must be an unidentified flying object. Karen looked at him, open-mouthed. And for once, she didn't go on. She was speechless. Without a word, Martin sauntered out of the room, whistling to himself. Dave was under the car. That's where he'd been operating the remote control plane from when Martin rushed up. That was great, Dave. Brilliant. Her eyes were popping out of her head like a couple of gobstoppers. <laughs> OK, Martin. Hey, now you said you could do me a favour. Yeah, what is it? Well, um, would you mind taking me over to your house to meet your sister? What? You mean our Karen? Yeah, I mean your Karen. OK, if that's what you want. Flying saucers and UFOs might be a bit of a puzzle, but people, Martin thought, were the biggest mystery of all. What is the best equipment to search for UFOs? I don't know. What is the best equipment? Well, I personally use the refractor telescope. Is that a fract? Yes. Oh. But to look at far-off distant planets, we use a radio telescope. What's a radio telescope? Um, well, it's a telescope you look at out to the far distant planets. Yes. To see if they're in life forms. Oh. Right, and if you see a radio on there, mm -hmm. then there must be people. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. But I personally use this telescope to carry out my investigations. Like Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, that's right. I thought you used a magnifying glass. Only to drink out of. Oh, I see. Yes. Why don't you have a look and see what you can see? Yeah, I'll have a quick look. OK. No, can't see anything. I certainly can. Now, despite all this advanced technology, there is still one thing every serious ufologist hates. Skeletor! Skeletor. Ooh, not I hate Skeletor. Him it's not him. Oh. No, it's the person who cheats and takes fake photographs of flying saucers. Who's that, then? Well, I don't know who it is. But well, what do they do? Well, unfortunately, it's far too easy. Oh. So we sent the McChuckle Brothers out to show you just exactly how easy it is. <laughs> Now 
that got there. Neither do I. Well, we're now just waiting for the photographs from the McChuckles, which should be coming through the letterbox at any minute. Yeah. And here they are now. Here they are. Of course, they have to be developed first, so I'll just take them away to the dark room. The dark room? Yeah. Oh, it's very dark in there. It's pitch black. Oh, I'll get a torch. Ah, uh, I don't need a torch. I'll just go and develop them. Oh. You wait here and look after the office. OK, then. <whistles> I wonder how Paul's getting on. He should be finished by now. Hey, well, you can. I don't see. see. Aye, aye, well, you can, you can. Aye, aye, you can. Aye, 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 aye. There you are. You see on the table. Aye, aye, aye. There you are. You can. Hey, hey, hey. Good you. Aye, aye. I don't know what you Oh, hey, hey, Ken. Hey, oh, awake, Ken. See, aye, aye. Here, see, see, see. Come aye. on, Ken. Hey. Paul? What? Is it ready yet? I don't know. It's dark in here. Is it? Oh, it is dark in here. Hmm. Ah, don't do that. You spoil it. Don't do that. Click. Don't do that. Oh, hey. hey. It's ready. It is. Come on. Right. Don't forget the light. Oh, no. And there we have it. The photographs that the McChuckles took. Pretty convincing, I think you'll agree. Pretty convincing? Yes. But with all forgeries, there is one major flaw. And there we are. I think we've proved pretty conclusively... Conclusively? And that there is categorically... Categorically? And absolutely... Absolutely. ...no such thing as UFOs. No flying saucers? No. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, oh. so until next week, goodbye. Bye. Hey, it was pretty good this yes, week, it wasn't it? was all right, wasn't I like that. Did Especially you? that bit when you had the black eye. Oh, I think It was yeah. funny, that. Yeah. Yes. Was it? Mm. This is T-47 from the planet Zonk. No intelligent life form on this planet.